question is this. What power must a bicyclist apply to a bike to cause a constant velocity uphill? So the velocity uphill is equal to 5.0 meters per second if it could coast down the same hill at the same speed, same constant speed, 5.0 meters per second. Let's say we know that the angle of the incline is 7.00 degrees and the mass of the guy is 75.0 kilograms. So again, the question is this. A bicyclist can coast down a hill at 5 meters per second. The question is, what must the power the bicyclist exert on the bike be in order for him to um, go up the hill at a, the same constant speed of 5.0 meters per second? Uh, yes, try. Um, wait, so he's, he's not accelerating now? He's moving at a constant velocity both half to both up and down the hill. So it gets coast down the hill at a constant velocity. Your turn. I'll give you a head start. As I wander around, what should I see on everybody's sheet of paper? Free body diagrams. I had better see free body diagrams in my wandering. I'm not answering that question. You should be able to answer that from the givens. The question was, is this a frictionless hill? Who can answer it? Because you should be able to answer this from the question here, Jenkins. Uh, yes. It was a 50-50 guess there. <laughs> Why? Because um, when he's going down the hill, if there was no friction, he would accelerate. OK, which is, well, you answered the question Anyway, I said, is this a frictionless hill? You said yes, and then oh, you're right. So that's okay. So is there friction? No. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Let's, let's just, rather right answer the question, let's just start with the explanation. We'll start there. What was the explanation? When he's going down the hill, he's not accelerating. Therefore, there has to be friction. There has to be friction. There has to be something that's slowing him down, regardless of what the question is. There has to be friction. Good. Make sure we get the free body diagrams correct, correct, because I'm pretty sure you are aware that if you do not get the free body diagrams correct, you're probably not going to get the answer correct. Sarah Jane, on the way up the hill, give me a free body diagram, please. Um, <clears throat> force of gravity, uh, perpendicular direction going down. Perpendicular. Oh, I see that again. And then uh, force normal going up to the good. Okay. And force of friction going down parallel. Just so you know, according to the free body diagram, what is not uh, sure? What's impossible to be happening according to our free body diagram? Nick? It's impossible to go up the hill. Actually, not quite. Jacob? It's impossible to be moving at a constant velocity. It's impossible to be moving at a constant velocity up the hill. We could be moving up the hill and decelerating down the hill. But with this free body diagram, it would be impossible to be moving at a constant velocity up the hill. What do we need in our free body diagram? Um, Method. Uh, force applied. The force applied. Which brings us to the question that we've asked, which is what is the power um, delivered by the bicyclist? So this is always the power, power delivered by some force. What is the force that is delivering the power? Class. Force supply. Force supply. So this is the power delivered by the force supply. Three body diagram on the way down. So um, you have force of going up perpendicular. Force of gravity perpendicular going down. Force of gravity parallel going down the right. Force of kinetic friction. Correct, because we're just coasting now. No, great. I'll give you a little more time. All right, I'd like to start working on it now, just in the interest of time. Uh, Sierra, what should we do next? I agree that we're going to sum the forces. Uh, that's definitely something we're going to do. But as students, we have a tendency to do that which we're most familiar with first. 
But what I would actually suggest at this point is you actually come up and figure out exactly what it is we're trying to find. It asks for the power delivered by the force applied. Certainly we're going to need to sum the forces, but it'll help us figure out what we need to do when we sum the forces. So, well, I think we're going to need to figure something about friction. True, I, I agree with, with all that. That's going to be when we sum the forces. But let's come back to this equation, the power delivered by the force applied. Yeah. Um, Close. Cosine theta. I'll put the dot product in there. So it's the force applied times velocity <coughs> times the cosine of theta. So let's just stop for a minute. Velocity we have. Theta. Title. Um, wait, what? Theta. Force applied, velocity, cosine theta. Oh, okay. It's zero. Because? Because they're in the same direction. They? Force applied and the velocity. The force applied and the velocity are both in the same direction, both up the hill. Therefore, this angle is zero degrees. So really, when we're summing the forces, remember what we're trying to figure out is what is the force applied. That is our goal. OK, so let's sum the forces. Pick a direction for me, please, Potter up. Sorry, I was ready. I didn't, I didn't just... OK, so we're going to sum the forces. Pick a direction, pick a free body diagram. All right, we can start with uh, going down. OK. So we can sum the forces in the uh, wider or the perpendicular direction first because we're going to do uh -huh. force normal. Um, we can do force normal equals force normal minus force of gravity perpendicular to the mass times acceleration in the perpendicular direction which is equal to zero. So force normal is equal to force of gravity perpendicular is equal to mg plus m theta. Good, we've summed the forces in the perpendicular direction. What should we do now? Nitish. Sum the forces in the parallel direction. So, force of gravity parallel minus force of kinetic friction equals mass times acceleration parallel, which would be zero. Because? Because you're not accelerating, you're going constant. You're at a constant velocity, therefore the acceleration is equal to zero, therefore the force of kinetic friction is equal to the force of gravity parallel. True. Which we do not. I also wrote down equals mg sine theta. Okay. Yeah. And then move on to the other three body Okay, so let's do this with both of these. Put them in doubles. Now, let's talk about going up the incline. Please sum the forces going up the incline. Flat. Uh, delta F parallel equals. I'm, I'm sorry. Sure, I'll put delta, that's fine. All right, not, not delta, sigma. F parallel equals force applied minus force of friction minus force of gravity parallel equals MA parallel, which is zero. Again, for the exact same reason. Therefore, the force applied is equal to the force of kinetic friction plus the force of gravity parallel. Okay, we've got an idea for me. What do we do now? I wrote that as a force applied equals mu k force normal plus mu k times theta. Okay, force applied is equal to mu k times force normal plus mg sine theta. Okay. Um, could you just write down the like force of kinetic friction from the down and replace that? Absolutely. As students, you get into habits. And so what I was tr actually trying to get to at the very beginning here, remember, all we're trying to find is the force applied. There's actually no reason to find the coefficient of kinetic friction. The force applied is equal to the, I'm uh, sorry, there's no reason to find the, co yeah, the coefficient of kinetic friction. We know the force of kinetic friction is equal to the force of gravity parallel. So this is equal to the force of gravity parallel plus the force of gravity parallel, which is equal to 2 times the force of gravity parallel, which equals 2 times mg sine theta. Right. Would it still work, though, if you... Absolutely. It's just extra work. Okay. Um, and I think you've learned that extra work is extra time 
<laughs> and time you do not have. So it's important to remember what you're trying to find when you start. So we come back to our power equation, which we got was going to be equal to force applied times velocity times the cosine of theta. Well, it's the force applied, which is 2 mg sine theta times the velocity times, and I'm going to put the cosine of 0 here, 0 degrees, just because we don't want to confuse things. So we have then the power equals 2. Give me the numbers here, please. Which Times g times uh, the sine of? How do you know that 7 degrees and not 0 or 180? Remember, it's going back to mg sine theta, which is force gravity parallel, which is the angle up the hill. Good. Times the velocity. And the cosine of 0 is just 1. So the power delivered by the force applied equals? 895.7. 895.7 with sig figs. We'll go with 2. Uh, 9.0 times 10 to the second. 9.0 times 10 to the second watts, Sierra. Watts. Watts. So again, I can't stress it enough. Remember what you're trying to find. Don't just go on autopilot. Autopilot will not get you where you want to go. 